Hi and welcome to this first of our exam prep videos for probability. This first video covers questions on the probability rules and the product rule. So first of all, questions on the probability rules. In question 1, C and D are two events of a random experiment. The probability of C is 0,36, the probability of D is 0,25, and the probability of C or D is 0,49, and they are asking us to determine the probability of C and D. So just to bring some thinking in here, whenever we're given a question, we look at the information we are given and we match this with the knowledge we have on this section. So pause the video here as you think about what you know here and then give this question a try. So if we have a look at the solution now, we take the equation that is true for any two events and we make P of C and D the subject then we substitute all the values given and calculate the probability of C and D. On to question two. This time you have two events, K and M, and you are given the probability of K, the probability of K or M, and the probability of K and M, and you're asked to evaluate the probability of M. Pause the video to give this one a go. Again, we see for this solution that the equation we need is the one we know to be true for any two events. Then we can either first make P of M the subject and substitute, or like here, we can substitute all the values we were given and then solve for P of M. Question three gives the probability of A and the probability of B, and then asks us to calculate the probability of A or B given two different conditions for A and B. The first is when A and B are mutually exclusive, and the second is where A and B are independent events. Pause here for a moment and see how you go with this one. Keeping the equation that is true for any two events in mind as we look at this solution, for mutually exclusive events, this equation looks like this because P of A and B is zero. We can then simply substitute the values in that we were given to find P of A or B. For independent events, this equation looks like this because P of A and B equals the product of the individual probabilities. Again, we can then substitute our values and solve for P of A or B. For question four, we have to determine whether A and B are mutually exclusive and or independent events given the following information. Pause the video to read the question through and give the solution a try. In order to prove events are mutually exclusive, we have to show that the probability of A and B equals zero. We use this equation and make the probability of A and B the subject. By substituting the values in from the information given, we see that the probability of A and B is in fact 0, 0,22 and not zero, which means we can conclude that these two events are not mutually exclusive. Then for 4.2, in order to prove events are independent, we need to prove that the probability of A and B is equal to the product of their individual probabilities. And so we find one, the product of the individual probabilities, and then the other, which we found in 4.1, and we can see that they are equal. And so we can conclude that events A and B are independent. On to questions on the product rule now. Question one is about four people taking turns to throw a dice to see who starts a game. Pause the video to take a moment to read through the question and then give it a go. In order to determine these probabilities, let's first establish that the probability of throwing a six is one over six and the probability of not throwing a six is five over six. And so then we find the probability that nobody throws a six by finding the product of the probabilities of each one not throwing a six, which is 48,2%. Next, to find the probability of the first three throwing a six and the last person not throwing a six, we find the product of each probability along the way. So one over six times one over six times one over six times five over six. And this rounds off to 0,4%. 
What about the probability that at least one person throws a six? Well, this means one or two or three or all of them throw a six. And so here it is helpful to think of the option that is not happening, and that is no sixes. And if we remember, we calculated this probability in the first part of the question, and so these situations are there for complementary events, and the answer here is 51,8%. Finally, the probability that only one person throws a 6, so the probability of this will be the product of the probabilities where one person throws a 6 and the other three don't throw a 6. And there are four different ways this can happen. Only the first person throws a 6, or only the second, or only the third, or only the fourth. And so the probability of only one person throwing a 6 is 4 times this, which is 38,6%. Question 2 says the probability of Isabella passing a driving test on the first appointment is 3 over 7. And then for each subsequent attempt after failing, the probability of her passing is 3 over 5. And they want us to determine the probability of Isabella passing the test in 2, then 3, then four or more attempts. Pause the video and give this question a try now. Let's first establish all the relevant probabilities. If the probability of passing on the first appointment is three over seven, then the probability of failing on the first attempt is four over seven because these are complementary events. Then for each subsequent attempt, the probability of passing is three over five and so the probability of failing is two over five. So then if we look at 2.1, the probability of passing in two attempts is 4 over 7 times 3 over 5. 2.2, the probability of passing in three attempts is 4 over 7 times 2 over 5 times 3 over 5. And finally, 2.3, the probability of passing in four or more attempts is the same as not passing in the first three attempts. And so we calculate this by going one minus the sum of the probability of passing on the first attempt, the probability of passing on the second attempt, and the probability of passing on the third attempt. Thank you for watching this video. Well done for getting stuck in and tackling these questions. Our next exam prep video covers questions on Venn diagrams. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.